Greetings, Wicked Watchers, and welcome back to Has Fans Unlimited. This episode has been a long time coming, and we're finally here to drive on down to the IMP headquarters and pay a visit to the frilly fiend, the elegant, eloquent executioner. It's Hell's very own Moxie. Yes, our favorite talkative Hellborn is up for the examination table this time, and we're no dorks. We're getting the information we want from this one, so be sure to blast that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss when we post a new video every single day. But with that out of the way, you love him, he's your favorite little imp, and we're here to tell you why, with 50 facts about Moxie you may, or may not, know. Number 1. Moxie is voiced by the legendary Richard Horvitz, known for shaping entire childhoods in the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy, Invader Zim, Ben 10, and hundreds of other background voices that we wouldn't have even noticed otherwise. Number 2. Moxie is an imp, which of course means he was born in hell, but it also means he can freely travel between the rings of hell, unlike sinners, who are all stuck in the pride ring. Number 3. Moxie is a Virgo, meaning he was born sometime between late August to mid-September. Number 4. Moxie is understood to be bisexual, like Charlie and Millie. Number 5. Moxie's family, while completely unnamed so far, seems to consist of only him and his parents, as opposed to Millie, who has enough for both of them. Number 6. In episode 7, Ozzy's, Moxie states that he and Millie have been married for a year. Something interesting to note is that episode 7 was released almost exactly a year after episode 1. Number 7. Moxie has singing talent, as we've all learned, but he's apparently also an avid guitar player, not just the occasional string plucker. You would think work would get in the way of that. Number 8. Moxie is also proficient in all forms of ranged combat, given his intimate skills with both guns and potentially crossbows. Number 9. Aside from being the gun expert of the team, Moxie is also supposedly the financial department and is the only one who seems concerned with the cost of the business, given he's the one who knows that the company couldn't afford a billboard, or his knowledge of how the salaries were spent for their TV ad. Still seems like Blitz went through with the billboard, though, given its brief appearance in episode 1. Number 10. Moxie appears to have hung up his wedding photo in the IMP office, seen in the background in the pilot, which Blitz took upon himself to graffiti. Number 11. Moxie seems to suffer from motion sickness between his clear nausea of riding a shark in the pilot to his incident on the lawsuit roller coaster in Lululand. Number 12. Moxie seems to be a prepared mom type of imp, constantly making sure Millie's alright, packing morphine for their trip to Lululand, and keeping so many damn guns on him when they go to kill Lyle Lipton, he could level a city. Number 13. Moxie has an incredible knowledge base of the history of firearms, as seen in episode 5, though it seems to go unappreciated. Don't worry, Moxie, we fans appreciate the lore. Number 14. Moxie has a phobia of theme parks, seeming to believe all the mascots are perverts. I mean, it's hell. I doubt he's wrong. Number 15. Moxie is able to identify Stryker's rifle in episode 5, stating it's not just blessed, but Carmine Craft which is impressive because Carmine was just a red dye used by the Aztecs and derived from crushed cochineal bugs. And that gun is clearly black, so how Moxie was able to identify that it was not only crafted in red dye, but also red dye made specifically with bugs just by looking at it is beyond me. Number 16. Moxie's employee of the month plaque can be seen in the background during the hand grenade section of the IMP jingle, meaning that it wasn't a job they were at. He was just hurling a grenade at some from the window of the IMP office. Number 17. Besides being knowledgeable in the history, naming, and handling of firearms, he also seems to be an insanely gifted marksman, managing to nail bullseyes at target games in Lululand without even looking at the target. Number 18. Despite it actually being hell, with zero legal consequences for, like, anything, Moxie is still unbelievably loyal to Millie, not even being phased by the seductive powers of not just Verosica, but at least four of her other suckers. Ladies and gays, get yourself a man like Moxie. Number 19. He apparently also believes with whole heart that this loyalty goes both ways, dodging a very easy stereotype of being jealous in episode 5 when the rugged, handsome cowboy shows up and starts potentially flirting with his wife. And he's right to think that. Lesbians and gentlemen get you a girl like Millie too. Number 20. Moxie apparently hates when Millie agrees with Blitz, at least in front of him. Number 21. Moxie 
is apparently a musical snob. He doesn't listen to pop genre and clearly hates Blitz's heavy metal music, seemingly only in his element when listening to opera or love tunes. Number 22. Moxie seems to take pride only in his marksmanship as he folds up when insulted about his musical skills by Asmodeus or his physical skills by Stryker, but is nearly thrown into a rage when some random carnival worker insults his shooting skills. Number 23. Despite Hell apparently having its own versions of booze, like Bezel juice, regular alcohol seems to affect Moxie just as easily as it would a person of his size. Number 24. Given Moxie's personal history with musical theater, he takes clear offense to ad jingles being compared to musical theater, since people like musical theater. Number 25. Moxie seems to actually put effort into not cursing, as opposed to everyone else, only cursing during moments of extreme distress. Number 26. Moxie lets Millie peg him, and hey, hey, I can see you over there, Rule 34. Stop it. Stop it. Don't you do it. Don't. Number 27. Moxie seems to be turned on by threats of violence, given his comment towards Lupti's willingness to torture his business partner. That's kind of hot really makes you consider what kind of disrespectful things go on in the bedroom. Number 28. Moxie apparently has an infatuation with the Phantom of the Opera, considering his phone having a ringtone that plays the organ, an instrument played heavily in the performance, the play's palpable influence on his hallucination in episode 6, and his apparent desire to know what it would be like to have sex with Michael Crawford, the original actor who played the Phantom. Number 29. Moxie seems to be a supporter of workers' rights, or at least least a socialist of some form, calling out Lyle Lipton for being a quote, greedy authoritarian capitalist, end quote, and saying it as if that alone is a reason for his death. I mean, he's he's not wrong. Number 30. In episode 6, when Blitz and Moxie are exposed to truth gas and begin yelling at each other, it's revealed that apparently Moxie liked the musical Cats enough to recommend it to Blitz, given Blitz's line about how the musical he recommended was, quote, just a bunch of horny cats, end quote. Number 31. On top of being the financial department and the weapons expert, Moxie is apparently also the construction crew, given that he's the one who has to repair all the destroyed walls in episode 4. Everyone, stop f***ing up my walls! Moxie's gonna have to fix all this sh Number 32. Moxie's musical skills are apparently not just appreciated by us mere mortals. He also has a musical award on his wall, seen for a brief second in episode 5. Number 33. In fact, in the same scene, we can see he keeps an old-fashioned alarm clock with a musical note on it, and has his room's wallpaper designed with musical notes. He should have just been a musician at this rate. Number 34. Despite being the skinniest one of the team, and having healthy lunches like avocado salad, Moxie is considered by Luna, which for now has no basis in seemingly any truth. Number 35. Moxie was born in the Ring of Wrath, which raises several questions about his upbringing, most notable of which is that the Wrath Ring is seemingly all farmers. So how did Moxie grow up as a musician? Number 36. Moxie is described as being a good cook, like dude. Dude, you already won best husband ever. You can dial it back a bit. Number 37. Moxie, as we've seen, receives zero respect from Millie's parents. Apparently just because he's not as rough and tumble as the rest of the imps in the Wrath Ring. But apparently he does have some gall in him because he went and married Millie anyway, clearly despite their wishes. Number 38. Moxie seems to have a problem with killing innocents and also indecency, apparently given his visual discomfort of the naked corpses in the pilot. Totally fine hanging one of the art directors for Has Been Hotel, apparently. Number 39. Moxie actually appears as an ornament on a Christmas tree in Vivzy Pop's Short Holidays, when the two main characters are making fun of Thanksgiving. Number 40. He also appears in the Has Been Hotel pilot, like Blitz and Luna. He can be seen as one of the silhouettes in the boo section of the live audience. Number 41. Aside from insults to his marksmanship, Moxie really doesn't seem to stand up for himself, but will happily stand up for Millie. Even even against her parents, whom Moxie cowered under early in episode 5 but towed off at the end. Number 42. Moxie carries around a lot of weapons on jobs, but he seems to have one pistol he takes with him everywhere, even to the Harvest Moon Festival. This also seems to be his own custom gun, as it has a music note on the side. Number 43. Moxie seems to utter animal-like sounds when he's angry, like most demons in hell, but his seem to be unique. Luna, of course, makes dog noises. Stryker makes sounds like a serpent 
and other imps like Millie and the Bouncer and Aussies make various feline sounds. But Moxie's seems to be some combination of a lion's growl and an alligator's hiss. Number 44. Moxie seems to have some kind of horn polish, as he looks fairly normal earlier in the day in episode 7, but has shiny horns on their trip to Aussies. Number 45. We can see it for a brief moment when Blitz is spying on them in episode 7, but Moxie actually knows the correct way to hold wine. Not a massive fact, but still one worth noting. As so many people hold it incorrectly, you hold it by the stem so your hand doesn't warm up the wine. Number 46. It would seem obvious that nobody in hell really knows Moxie by name, but considering he's apparently won a music award out of all the singers that no doubt went to hell, it seems he should be more famous than he is. However, not even Fizzarali, a fellow performer, knew him. So it implies either that's a fake award, or Moxie went under some incredibly convincing stage name. Number 47. Despite the constant new ways Blitz finds to anger Moxie, it seems he still cares for his boss, even visibly feeling bad for him during his admittedly well-justified roasting at Ozzy's. Number 48. Moxie does not appear to own a car, as they travel to the office via Blitz's van, and even all the way to the Wrath Ring just by the van, but when going by themselves, take a public train to their destination. Number 49. In case your mind blanks like Blitz's does when listening to Moxie, he apparently drinks a, quote, Neapolitan cappuccino, more capo than chino, with more than four ounces of milk because the beans won't have the right texture, or in lieu of that, a venti traditional misto with soy milk, two blonde shots, an affogato, and ristretto with three vanilla pumps at the bottom with coffee added afterwards, end quote. And finally, number 50. Blitz appears to have hired Moxie for IMP in a subway station or parking lot of sorts. The picture taken right behind Blitz's van. And that covers it for today's video. Did you learn something new about our cherished crossdresser? Did we miss something important? Let us know in the comments below. It really helps us bring you the best possible experience. And make sure yet again to blow away that subscribe button and get that bell all jazzed up so you don't miss any videos we bring you every day. But with that, this has been the Has Fans, and we will see you next time.